So the question is, um, sketch the graph y is sine x over x. So that's what we're going to try and do. So first let's look at sine x. What does sine x look like? Well, basically sine x is a bunch of waves like this. Which is zero at regular points. And oscillates above and below the, the axis. And it's an odd function. Sorry, this is a bad drawing. Um, but you get the idea. And then y equals 1 over x. So we're just breaking this down into its parts to just get a look at kind of the rough structure. So in a sketch, the first thing you want to do is just kind of get a rough idea of the structure. So this seems like a reasonable thing to do. So y is 1 over x looks like this. Sorry, this shouldn't be wavy. So let me do that again. Um, OK, you get the idea. It's a little bit wavy, but whatever. And then down like this. Um, so this is this is y is 1 over x. And this is uh, y is sine x. And so it's not, often what people try and do is they'll, they'll sketch the, the parts of the graph and think, well, we just want to kind of multiply these, right? Which is true, but it, that's not always the easiest way to look at it. So um, I'd say the the important features that we can take from uh, from this, I'll write, I'll write important features. Um, important features are the fact that the y equals sine x graph um, cuts, the, cuts the y, uh, sorry, the x-axis um, regularly, i.e. at multiples of um, multiples of pi, um, and so when you multiply it by uh, one over x, it's still going to be zero, right? For for all of these values, so um, so what should we write? So um, so y equals sine x over x equals zero whenever x equals k pi for some um, k in z, z. This is the, how we denote the integers, right? So, so that's an important thing to notice from this graph. Um, uh, the second thing I'd say it's important to notice is that, um, so looking back at the graphs, uh, as x gets large, this is going to become zero, right? And as x gets large here, well, this is bounded between 0 and 1, right? So um, negative 1 is less than or equal to sine x is less than or equal to 1. Um, and um, 1 over x approaches 0 as x gets large, right? So, um, so this is bounded and this approaches zero. So that product is going to approach zero. Um, so sine x over x, over x approaches zero as x goes to infinity. Um, and, and we get a general idea of the structure that this is actually going to decay, right? So, so the amplitude is going to um, it's always going to hit zero and go above and below the axis, but it's tending to zero smoothly. So in effect, the amplitude is going to decay. At the minute, we're just looking at a positive x, right? And the other situations are a bit more complicated, so you want to start with the with the things that you do know. So um, so we do know all of this. So we can do a first kind of rough sketch, um, kind of have some idea of what it's going to look like, at least for, for positive x. Um, so if we say this is um, pi over 2, so it's going to be 0, um, uh, sorry, this can be this can be pi. Uh, let me rub that out. Um, whoops. Um, sorry, I'm still getting used to the technology. Um, Okay, this is pi. Um, so, so we're going to draw it for just positive x greater than um, greater than pi. So according to what we've looked at here, um, we've got a decaying sine curve, um, which is zero at multiples of um, x is k pi. Okay, so I think, and for um, 
so just above pi, um, sine becomes, um, well, we look at the graph, this is where pi is here, right, this is pi. So for just above pi, y be um, sine x becomes negative. Uh, and x is always positive for positive x, obviously, tautologist. Um, so this is going to start being negative. So um, if we draw the line in, I'll draw the line in red. Um, this is going to go something like this. And then that's a 2 pi. It's a 3 pi. And it's getting smaller, smaller. And then it's going to kind of go like this. Okay, uh, and into chaos. Wait, let me extend this axis. Um, although the, and this probably isn't clear from my drawing, but these uh, these are at regular multiples of pi, right? This is 2 pi here, this is 3 pi, and these are regular. So this is a general structure for positive x, right? Um, and so I guess, what about for negative, negative x? Um, and again, we can make another another important observation is that um, sine x over x is an even function. Now, what do I mean by that? This is notation for function. Um, um, so what this means is, I um, for if we call this f of x, f of x is sine x over x f of minus x equals sine minus x over minus x and sine is odd so this is minus sine of x, it's clear from the sketch divided by minus x which is equal to sine x over x which is f of x. Okay, so f of minus x is f of x, i.e. Um, f is even. That's exactly what it, what, it, um, what it means. So I'll just write that. Therefore, these three dots, and therefore, f of minus x equals f of x. So then we immediately get all of the negative values for which we've drawn the positive values, right? It's just going to be symmetric. That's kind of what even means. Even means symmetric about the, um, the y-axis. So I can I can modify the I'll sketch again and go red on. Um, so it looks something like this here, decaying attitude, and it's going to look symmetric here. Okay, this isn't so symmetric, but you get the idea, right? Um, okay, so now the question is, what happens here? And maybe you've thought about it that, well, if we evaluate this function at zero, then we're going to get sine zero over zero, but sine of zero is zero, right? So that seems like it's going to be a problem. So let's let's have a think about this. Um, so, so, all right, what happens at zero? What happens at zero? So this is a common problem which will could easily come up in your um, in an interview question um, and, and something called L'Hopital's rule is really useful to know so I'll give you an example here but I encourage you to look it up um, just so you have a good idea um, so I'll give you I'll give you a couple of approaches how you can see what happens at zero so um, again we're gonna uh, whoops Sorry, undo that so we're gonna let f of x be sine x over x still. Um, and we want to look at the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. Um, and what that means is, that means, well, we don't know the exact value at 0 because that's dividing by 0 and we can't do that. But as x gets really, really small, how does this kind of look? So the first way I'm going to do it is using L'Hopital's rule. So I'll, I'll state it first, and then I, I'm not going to give a proof or anything. That's really hard. You, you, you do that in university. Um, I couldn't re recount the proof, but it's not, it's not super complicated. Um, so this equals by 
L'Hopital's rule. And as long as you know the statement, then you could quote this in an interview. I did in mine, um, and I think it got me some cred points. Um, so by L'Hopital's rule, this is equal to cosine of x over the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of x over 1. Now, why is this? So, why? Um, well, L'Hopital's rule states that if you have an in what, what's called an indeterminate form, an indeterminate form um, states that um, um, the limit of g of x is just some function over h of x as um, um, x approaches zero if this um, is indeterminate indeterminate i.e. it looks like zero over zero when you evaluate it at zero then we have this result the limit as x approaches zero of g of x over h of x equals the limit as x approaches zero of g prime of x, that's the derivative of g with respect to x, over h prime of x. Okay, that's just a statement of L'Hopital's, right? So basically, if we want to find the limit of one function over another, and it looks dodgy, looks like 0 over 0, then we can instead consider the derivative over the derivative, right? Um, so if you look back here, the derivative of sine x is cosine of x, and the derivative of x is 1. So that's why this statement holds, okay? But this, well, the, divided by 1 is just like leaving it the same, and cosine of 0 is 1. It's just 1. So what that means is, the, the, the point on the graph where x is 0 is going to have a, um, like the, the graph line is going to cut the, um, the y-axis, i.e. where x is 0, at the value of 1. Okay. Um, another way to do this would be to look at the um, the series expansion of sine. So, so this is like x minus x cubed over three factorial plus blah 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 higher order x terms, all divided by x. And if you take the limit as x goes to zero, then um, this is going to cancel become 1, this is going to drop to a 2, and all of these are going to become lower powers, but as x goes to 0, um, sorry this is getting a bit messy, I hope it's still vaguely clear, um, so as x goes to 0, um, hot is like higher order terms, uh, that means powers of x um, that, I, that aren't, don't appear here, um, like the the x to the 5 of a 5 factorial will become x to the 4 of a 4 factorial, and that's a higher order term, as well as all the others. Um, so as x approaches 0, all of those terms um, approach 0, right? Because it's a polynomial in x. Um, sorry, that's, that looks kind of like a 9. We'll, we'll erase that. Um, uh, So higher order terms approach zero, um, and so the higher order terms approach zero, but this is one. So therefore, um, f of x um, equals one at x is zero. Okay, this is another way of looking at it, which is less technical. But um, you know, if if you show, if you showed this as reasoning in an, in an interview, I'm sure they'd they'd accept it. So we know that it cuts at one. Um, and, and now I think we have enough information to to draw it. So if we thought, if we look back at what we drew previously over here, the extra information we have now is that this point is on the graph, and it's completely smooth, and um, and it's not going to cut the 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 axis again, um, and so it's pretty 
I think it's pretty intuitive to see at least that it goes just kind of like, sorry, this should be symmetric. All right, maybe I should have another go at that. It looks, okay, I'm failing again, but it should be symmetric. Um, and it looks like this, right, where this is the point one and the amplitude decays as you go um, in a, towards a higher magnitude of x. Um, but that's the graph of, I'll write it y equals, this is y, this is x, y is sine x over x. Cool. I hope that made sense.